Check it out. Our own portable xenomorph barbecue. There's some things that I really do enjoy about this game. One, the pulse rifle looks absolutely gorgeous. This is this is a work of art. And you can customize it with your own <laughs> um Oh my god. Uh Stanley Kubrick esque um letters. Jesus I keep forgetting the name of the movie. I've been rewatching all of Stanley Kubrick's movies, and now I'm <laughs> going full dementia. I haven't got the grandma chair for it. Uh, oh my god. Uh, full metal jacket. Jesus. There we go. <laughs> uh, you can even customize it full metal jacket style. It's gorgeous. And every time you get a headshot on a xenomorph or a critical hit, there's this sound effect which almost sounds like the music's flourishing alongside your critical hits. It's it's fun. Also, the UI is tight. There's way more to the customization. The game surprised me in ways that I didn't expect. I was expecting the Xenomorph animations to be a little better. Um, you know, there's some downsides, but on the other hand, the developers really do have a lot of, of passion for what they're trying to make and what they're trying to execute, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that and kind of impressed by that as well, but... Regardless, let's go ahead and hop in. We're going to be playing on intense difficulty. And I'm going to cross my fingers that we've got some gung-ho We're heading gung -ho down to LV-895. The Weyland-Yutani surface lab was overrun by Xenos, but there may be survivors. The closest shelter is the mountain caves to the west. You repel into the caverns for search and rescue. There's some weird things about it, like you've got combat ratings, which are, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, it's like Destiny's light level system, in a way, on a very base level. It's definitely the carrot stick thing, you know, they got things for you to work towards. What I'm working towards is finding people to play with on intense difficulty. There's no, ah, we got somebody! I'm gonna see if we you got working Joes that fill in as AI. I'm gonna wait and see if we can get some human beings in here. <laughs> I like that that working Joe has Tin Man as on his extinct, armor. That's a little insensitive. Oh God! Oh God! Damn it! No! I forgot that. Uh, even if you don't have any human beings in your match, you've still got a time. Uh, damn it! It sent us in. Son of a bitch. Okay, let's back out. Man, they gotta add... See, the thing is, games like this, they really need crossplay. This game doesn't have crossplay. I don't know if it's in the cards. Probably. But right now, it doesn't have crossplay, and until it's in the game, I'm gonna assume that it's dubious whether we get it or not. There's supposedly cross platform play. I mean, goddamn, across uh, LV895. The Weyland Yutani surface lab was overrun by Xenos. I'm just gonna mute her. Um, there's supposedly cross generation play. I don't know if there is or if there isn't, but yeah, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 are supposed to be able to play with each other. That's it. You know, you, PlayStation can't play with Xbox, can't play with PC. And that is not good. Because it's kind of hard to find players and the game's been out for three days. This is the third day it's been out and there's just nobody playing on intense difficulty. On PlayStation, anyway. I don't know, maybe this is a big hit on Xbox. I probably should have bought it on computer. On computer. Probably should have bought it on Steam. But silly me. I, oh god. <laughs> Is it faster to quit, like, from the dashboard, or should I quit from the game? I don't know. This isn't going very well. Anyway. Welcome, guys. I just wanted to play a little bit more Aliens. Uh, I've been playing a little bit more Aliens off-stream, but I wanted to stream it one more time before I possibly sell it. That's why I bought physical, you see. <sighs> By the way, anybody get the 
Nothing's on the shirt. It's a good show. Anyway, the reason why I bought this on PlayStation is because if I buy it physically, I can sell it. If I buy it on Steam, I guess you got the two-hour refund, but, you know, outside of that, you're screwed. It's yours. Well, it's not really yours. Even discs aren't yours. These are licenses. You got licenses. 2021! Catch up! Okay, let's try this again. I don't think we're gonna be able to find anybody to play with. Who's that in the picture behind me? Oh, that's, um, my uncle Bob Sacamano. Good man. I guess it's kind of weird for me to have a picture of my uncle. Marines, Actually, that's a painting. Down to LV the way Lenny it's a real painting. I commissioned a, a really talented painter in Vietnam to paint that for me. He did a great job. Um, I got it framed. Love it. It's good stuff. Is it just me or was this? Yeah, this is a Game Pass game. That's exactly right. You got it, man. This should have been on Game Pass. I think it will. Um, I could see this being a PS Plus game. And that's going to do wonders. The thing is, I meant to have been in the... I, I was expecting that we would be in the game already. But while I'm trying to get in a match, here's what I think is going on, okay? This game would have been a perfect Game Pass game. This would be a great PlayStation Plus game. The reason it isn't is because they're doing it smart. You know, the, you got all the suckers like me that buy it on launch, and then when player numbers start to dwindle, which I guess is three days after it launched, then when player numbers actually start to dwindle, like a month, two months from now, uh, they release it on Game Pass, or they release it on PlayStation Plus as a free game, when they start to see that they're not really getting any more sales, that's probably what they'll do to boost player count. And then they'll roll out some of their live service patches, some of their content updates, hope for the best. Didn't work out so well for Predator Hunting Grounds, which I actually enjoyed. I had fun with that game, but I don't think the live service was a success in that case. You know what? Um, I think I'm going to have to change the title and take out the word intense because I don't think we're going to find anything. Yeah, I don't think we'll find nothing. Okay, uh, I'm going to try one more time, and if we don't get in a match, I'm just going <laughs> to lower the difficulty to standard. <laughs> here's, the, here's the bright side, okay? Oh my god! Holy shit, yo, we got... We got two guys! We got a full squad! Wonderful! 658, this guy's a machine. 670, oh my goodness. And meanwhile, I am 279. I'm not even, what am I doing playing intense? See, that's the thing that I'm not really crazy about with some of these gameplay systems they have in place. It just seems kind of arbitrary. Like, instead of, basically the combat rating is your different perks. See, that stuff's fun. Anyway, uh, your combat rating is uh, the culmination of your stats within your perks, your stats within your weapon attachments. I would rather my perks and weapon attachments um, change how I play, you know? Clever gameplay stuff. Rather than just, um, I don't know. I mean, it's not necessarily all directly affecting your stats. Some of it does kind of affect your, like, your reload speed. That's not necessarily as direct as, um, I don't know, increasing your firepower. Nevertheless, I do kind of miss the days of, like, Left 4 Dead. Back 4 Blood just had a beta, and Back Check 4 Blood fire. was Remember, we're looking for friendly. kind of the antithesis of Left 4 Dead in a way. It's very games as a service, whereas Left 4 Dead was it's a product of its time. You know, it came out when games as a service wasn't a thing. And, it, you know, that's, that's what you got. You got the game that you bought, and that was that. And, uh, it was a really simple game, in a way. Uh, it had more to do with your skills, with your weapons, and all that fun stuff, rather than, uh... Sorry, I'm, I'm mixing the audio on the fly. Anyway, what I really liked about Left 4 Dead was its simplicity. 
There's something beautiful in that, and there's something really fun about that. Instead of weapons having weapon attachments that make your weapon more powerful, everybody was on a level playing field and it was just up to your personal skill. That's not necessarily the model you want to go with if you want to keep people hooked. If you want to keep them on a treadmill, so to speak, with content and live service updates and everything. Because if you don't have all these different unlocks, if you're always on the same level playing field every time you start a new match, then what is there to work towards? What, what keeps you playing? It's fun! That's what keeps you playing! Because it's awesome and Left for Dead fucking rules. That's why everybody's... Well, mods as well. That's a big part of it. But... Anyway... I'm kind of having slightly more fun with this than I was having with the Back for Blood beta. Even though Back for Blood is probably, objectively, definitely the better game. Back for Blood doesn't have Xenomorphs, however. And this isn't as close to Left 4 Dead as Back for Blood is. Anyway, um, playing this on a big TV, it's big kind of frosty. fun. I'm playing it on a really tiny monitor right now through my capture card preview window because I'm streaming, but I gotta say, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Aliens aesthetic. I'm gonna try to not talk too much over uh, the in-game dialogue because some of it's kind of neat, but there's no- Oh, Jesus. There's no real story here, so don't be too worried about that. These guys, they're kind of like witches in a way, where they're usually hiding in a corner or in the ceiling, and when you walk up to them, they pounce on you. Logical waste breach. Lockdown. No specifics. Keep advancing. But I've seen them, like, before they saw me multiple times, and I don't think that you are really able to avoid them, which is kind of weird. First couple times they nailed me, I thought, okay, I just gotta be more careful. And then, once I started being careful, and once I started seeing them before they started attacking me, I kind of realized, I don't know if this is a glitch, I don't know if this will be fixed, but right now, it doesn't really seem to matter if you see them first. Maybe you'll get a little more damage in, but especially if it's a crowded, uh, like, spaceship, really tight quarters, there's not much you can do. This area is kind of reminding me of the Alien vs. Predator movie. Except it's an ice cave that they have that man-made tunnel in that takes them to the giant natural cave that has some sort of an Aztec pyramid. On the tent. Blood. Not a good sign. Continue your sweep. There could still be friendlies alive. Okay, I'm playing on intense, so I've got, I've got to really focus here. The difficulty from this game is, is interesting. It's mainly just in the fact that these guys are relentless. They're not too smart. This isn't Alien. This is Aliens. You know, it's an action movie game. Uh, it's not anything like the Aliens in Alien Isolation. This is a whole different breed. Whole different ball game. Anyway, what's up, guys? Welcome. Zeno, it's the chill Alien stream. Behind. Loving the graphics. Is this available on PlayStation 4? Yes. I'm playing on PlayStation 5. But I can't imagine it looks that different on PS4. I mean, I think it looks good. But I could see this looking just as good on PlayStation 4. The graphics really aren't bad. I was surprised when I hooked this up to my normal television. Because I'm playing on a small, small screen right now. But when I hooked this up to my normal TV, it looks great. Usually, not all the times, but if, if a game isn't, you know, super high in the fidelity Target. budget department, the uh, that isn't shown kindly when you enlarge it. I said I wasn't going to talk over her, but you know what? It's really just... I don't know if it's, <laughs> if it's worth it. I'm just going to keep her down. Okay, let me know if the gun volume's too loud. Welcome, Alexander. Alexander Vaught. Is that a boy's reference? So World of Gaming! Toxian! Sean! 
Mella. Michael, welcome. Yeah, you know, it does kind of seem like it has some Gears of War inspiration. You can take cover. I don't really get why. I know there's going to be working Joes at some point, and I think the working Joes have ballistic weapons. I mean, I guess you could hide from the spitters, but the spitters are kind of an AOE effect. So, I think you might get some splash damage, nevertheless. It's pronounced vote. I'm so sorry. I remember now that you you mentioned that. You've told me that before. My apologies. Alexander Vought is not a kind comparison to make. You know, there's something a little cathartic about just mowing these guys down. I'm cutting them down like corn in a field. It's kind of tranquil in its own twisted way. What you see is what you get. This isn't a review. I already did a... My first stream was kind of just a first impression stream. I'm just... I'm just chilling with you guys right now, having fun, but... Uh... I had a glitch where I wasn't able to proceed with the campaign because it wouldn't register that I completed the mission that I kept completing over and over again, but... I've been able to, um, dwell in the gameplay for a while, and there's not a whole lot more than what you're seeing here. The pulse rifle's really, it's really cool. I'm, this is what I'm using right now, is the pulse rifle. And it doesn't really handle like any other gun. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I think there's one or two guns in Cyberpunk that kind of handled like this, but it's really different because it's just so laser stable. It literally shoots lasers. Really satisfying to use. <laughs> Somehow, uh, there's attachments for this thing which I've got applied to it. There's attachments which increase the stability. It's already ridiculously stable, which is kind of fun because it makes it really easy to use. And you'd think that would be to his detriment. You'd think that would kind of make it boring. But... That's where the fun is. It's so stupid easy to use that it's just really satisfying to keep getting these critical shots and these headshots over and over again. It's... It's stupid fun. It's not stupid fun, but it's stupid fun, you know? And I like that. In that way, it kind of reminds me of Left 4 Dead because none of the guns in Left 4 Dead handle realistically. Is he meaning to heal me? Because that is really kind of him. I probably should have healed myself. I wait until I'm really, really, really low because these health kits fully restore your health. But I was probably pushing it. These guys are way above my level, so I should really... I <laughs> should have really let them take the lead. But, yeah, there's not that many enemy varieties. They're all kind of just little twists on each... Iterations, really. Like, that was an irradiated spitter. It's more powerful than a normal spitter, but... It's pretty academic. It's, it's mostly just in numbers, rather than AI or... Um, I don't know, fighting personality. But I got the flamethrower in, damn it! It is fun! I love this thing. Game over, man! Game over! But yeah, it's- it's- my enjoyment with this game is kind of weird. On the other hand, it really does make sense that the pulse rifle would handle this simply because... It needs to. The game calls for it. The difficulty in this game doesn't come from smart AI. No way. It comes from... The absolute chaos that you're gonna see shortly. Uh, when you get hordes of xenomorphs, like, 20 of them coming on you. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's... 
They're really juvenile of me, but terrible phrasing. Complete accident, I swear. Anyway, the difficulty comes from not getting in your teammate's line of fire and not getting sworn. This this plays like a top-down shooter in third person. Did I read it right that this isn't just... Did I read it that right that this isn't just at once completed and DLC is planned? No, DLC is planned. So, what the developers have said is that the season pass is going to be completely free. Uh, there is going to be post-launch content. That's the whole thing. The developers of this game are kind of doing what's really popular to do right now, which is games as a service. Basically, I really should have picked up some ammunition. I'm hoping that there's some in this room up ahead. Totally forgot to do that. That's cool. It's not too persistent, but still, it's kind of nice to see that, uh, that drum mag, uh, be a little persistent. Shit, I'm just about out of ammunition. Anyway, a lot of reviews say that this game doesn't have a whole lot of content, and it doesn't. Hey, I don't know if you guys can... They can't hear me. Shit. Two seconds. Hey, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I was a... I was an idiot, and I didn't pick up any ammunition, so I'm gonna double back real quick. Hey, I think these... Hey, just curious, are you guys on PS5s? Oh, okay, I was just wondering. I, I thought maybe uh, cross-gen wasn't implemented. Okay, this, I gotta say, the community for this game is great. Everybody that I run into is really nice. Uh... Shit, I'm having a really double back. Am I going in a circle? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh god, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave these guys high and dry if I'm not careful. Here we go. My controller speaker's really low. Let me make sure, uh... Yeah, you can't adjust it here. Okay. I thought maybe the game itself also had a voice level option. Alright, I got ammo. I'm on my way back. Yeah, community's fucking great! Everybody that I've uh, ran into in this game, they're, they're just... They're helpful, they're having fun, and... They usually work as a team, and most of the time they have microphones, which is a really nice surprise. Is this the door? Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. I told you we're secure. You're the only ones in danger here, Marines. That's the job. For some reason, I I know the objective marker was over here, but I thought that you had to kind of loop around. My bad. My brain just short circuited on me. These guys are a ridiculous, ridiculous level jump away from my current level, so. <laughs> the fact that they're taking some serious damage right now is making me really nervous. Luckily, I've got a health pack, so if Gunner over there gets any more damage on him, I can take care of that. Almost there! Shit, that sucks. Alex says, game is still broken on Xbox. Yeah, Xbox apparently has a lot of matchmaking issues with this game. It sucks to hear that they haven't fixed it. On the other hand, it shouldn't have launched like that, but it does take time to roll out fixes, unless it's server-side. Which, I'm guessing that may not be server-side, or maybe it's just... Sorry about that, guys. I should have just went forward for my ammo. They're so polite. So polite. Those are some good boys! Raised right! Even bad boys love their mamas. Not that I'm their mama. You get what I mean. Battle is the Great Redeemer. 
the fiery crucible upon which only true heroes are forged. The only place where all men share the same rank and file, regardless of what parasitic scum they were going in. Sergeant Candy, Edge of Tomorrow, otherwise known as Bill Paxton, made that movie. Oh no, Master Sergeant Farrell, that's right. Maybe his last name was Candy, or middle name was Candy, I don't know. Bill Paxton's a scene stealer, man. He's one of those guys. He wasn't like headlining movies, but every single movie that he was in, he brought something. He brought something only he could bring. Fucking sucks. Loved him though. Every single Master Sergeant Farrell line is uh, burned into my brain. No, sir, I am from Kentucky. Yeah, he was, he was even in this terrible movie uh, with Tom Hanks and Emma Watson. I think it was called uh, uh, The Circle. It was basically a face. <laughs> it was a Facebook movie, except it was really stupid. And Facebook was evil. Uh, Bill Paxton was in it, and he was hilarious. I think it was his last role, unfortunately. Sad it was that movie, but. Another guy who kind of. He kind of reminds me of Paxton in his, uh, like, with his charisma and everything, but... Michael Ironside! See you at the party, Richter! Absolutely atrocious Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, but... Ah! Michael Ironside! He's also the voice of, uh, Sam Fisher in Splinter Cell. Well, uh, he was ill when they were making Blacklist, so they got a replacement during Blacklist, but he's back! Splinter Cell is not back, but Michael Ironside is back as Splinter Cell. Anyway, what's up, guys? Welcome if you're just joining up. Let me know if the game volume needs to be raised. It's probably a little bit low right now, but... Something else that's kind of fun... Keep in mind, nothing about this game is deep, but... As I was playing this last night, I kind of realized it doesn't really need to be deep. I'd like it to be. I would love it if we could get a AAA Aliens game. But... For 20 bucks, I would be quite satisfied with this experience. The only thing, I mean, I would like the Xenomorph animations to be better. I would like the Xenomorph AI to be better. But as a mindless shooter, this is kind of fun. It's got sphincter doors, it's got flamethrowers, it's got it all. Except for the AI. But I could forgive that if we could just get crossplay. Crossplay would be. That would be nice. Hold on, uh, let me heal you up, Gunner. Beautiful. Gotta pay my respects. These guys, these guys are carrying, no doubt about it. I had a glitch where I couldn't progress with the campaign because the game would not register no matter how many times I successfully completed the last mission of the first chapter. It wouldn't register it, so I had to keep replaying that over and over again. And then today, I failed it, and it registered it as me successfully completing it, finally. So, I've been pretty stagnant on my level, even though I've gotten a lot of gameplay experience in. You know what? I've never seen weird science. Shameful, but I've never seen it. Man, it's such a shame. Obviously, he wouldn't be reprising his character, but... If Bill Paxton was still alive, I would love it if you could select his voice to be your Marine's voice. He's got an energy, man. Oh, damn. Our boy here got slaughtered. Yeah, like I said, these guys, these xenomorphs. Holy shit, that's really fucking cool. Another thing that's cool about the game is just that it's aliens. <laughs> 
That's that's all it really needs, in a way. You know, there's gonna be a lot of people that are buying this just because they want to be in the aliens world shooting xenomorphs. There's a fun little gameplay mechanic, which is a damage multiplier. If you use certain abilities like this shoulder cannon, you can see I've got a 7.5% uh, damage multiplier now, which is... It's, it's basic stuff, but it's really fun. I think that's on the back of the box, actually. It's basic stuff, but it's really fun. Quick, 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 quick! Shit. I don't know why I keep insist on running out into the middle. Welcome Beta TV, unless that's better, in which case my bad. The two T's trip me up. I haven't gotten face hugged yet, no. I haven't seen any work in Joe's either. My progress was frozen due to a glitch. Which kind of sucked. If you guys don't have, um, if you can't get past the final mission despite actually completing it successfully, Try power cycling your PlayStation 5 and then playing the mission again. That's what worked for me. It would be kind of, it'd be janky, but if we had an Aliens vs. Predators game, I'd play the shit out of that. AVP2, I feel like that's something that just inherently works better with, uh, older games. Something with that's that unbalanced. I can't imagine AVP2 from the early 2000s was actually a balanced game. It was an arena shooter, and you could play as all three races. It was awesome. And it was completely ridiculous. I can see where this would be more fun on a mouse and keyboard, too. Yeah, it is kind of like Starship Troopers. Damn, waiting for me. That's embarrassing. I just wanted to look at the gored up synths. Well, that was easy thanks to the team members I had. A lot of credits for that one, and intense difficulty no less. Sweet. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. At least I got some assists in. See what other stats there are. Oh, God. 
Oh god, that friendly fire damage. Oh, that's embarrassing. Let's see if I can up my uh, combat rank. Carry my weight a little more. Stumble chance, that's pretty good. Damn, that actually looks great. Yeah, that's way better than what we had before. Microphone's really low for some reason. I don't think he's actually talking. He's just talking out loud to himself. PlayStation is so awkward when it comes to uh, mics because you just can't. Napalm rockets. Oh, that's awesome. Considerably less damage, but larger explosion radius. I don't think that's worth it. Micro rockets now fire 12 smaller rockets that explode into fiery fields. Uh, actually, these are kind of similar, except this has knockdown, and I believe this has damage over time. Maybe it's just, uh... <laughs> can, I, can I stack them? Wait. How do I how do I put this in? Demolisher only. Uh well, I'm on demolisher. So Hmm. I don't get it. Ah, I see. Okay. Man, I don't know which one's superior. Would you guys pay $1,000 for a PlayStation 5? No. No way, man. That's not worth it. Unfortunately, some countries, that's MSRP. I think I saw a PlayStation being sold. I want to say it was... It wasn't Germany media market, but anyway, it was like eight hundred dollars. It, it came to. So, I know it's really bad in Brazil, but some countries it's really unlucky. Okay, I'm gonna go with this. You know, what? I don't know if I want either of these. Oh. You attach them to the- Okay, Jesus, that took me a while. You can only have one attached. Right. Well, let's check it out. <laughs> it looks great. Alright. Let's see how much money we got. You got a scan of Katanga's in the early 70s. See some Yo, I got- Is it legal? I mean, if it's illegal, I can get no oh, problem. Oh, plenty. But if it's well, legal, I'm gonna I'll save it. We have enough for attachments, but I'm gonna save up for another weapon. You can grab those off ship then. Okay, so this guy's on my team. I don't know if he's ready for another match. His microphone's really low. All right, let's see what our combat ranking is, because he's almost 700. He's really, really up there. We're only 355. So I kind of want to bring this guy with me again, but I don't know if he's up for another round. Well, he's running around. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see. We're gonna keep the difficulty on intense.
I don't know what this looks like for him, but I'm guessing he has a, an opt-in, opt-out option. <laughs> Recommended combat rating 550. Great. I'm what, 350? Barely? You know, uh, play, so PC, obviously, that's like, it's, it's great. PCs, gaming PCs, you know, go for it. But <laughs> consoles, they're fantastic. None of the headache. Um, constantly I have driver's issues with Windows. I'm hoping that Windows 11 is going to be a big step up from Windows 10, but I've, a, I've got countless problems with Windows 10. Driver compatibility is just ridiculous. That's just something that a lot of people don't want to fiddle with. If you got time, if you like fiddling, if you like calibrating, maximizing your stuff, uh, PC gaming, it's wonderful. But if you just want to play games, Series X, PlayStation 5, they're fantastic consoles, even on a large television. The thing is, the better the television, it's just like speakers. If you've got really fantastic speakers playing <laughs> poor quality music on those fantastic speakers, it's not going to make it sound better. It's going to make it sound worse. Um, playing uh, a game that doesn't look very good on a really large television, it's going to make the game look worse than playing on like a CRT or something that kind of masks and kind of smudges. Nevertheless, PlayStation 5... Xbox Series X, even at 77 inches on an OLED television, the image is beautifully constructed, beautifully realized. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Call of Duty Cold War. All right, this is what really impressed me about the new generation, the current generation. 4K, 120 hertz. In Call of Duty Cold War, it looks incredible. It looks really, really good. Because these consoles are... Every Series X is the same. Same with PlayStation. Because of that, the developers are able to fine-tune everything. That, and that's something they, they can't do for computers. That's on you. However, with whatever tweaks you're able to do, you're still not able to go as far as developers are able to go um, if they want to. There's obviously bad console ports, just as there's, there's bad PC ports. Long story short, I think we're finally getting to a point where uh, computer gaming, it's not embarrassing console gaming quite as much as it used to. So yeah, no shame. No shame in uh, foregoing PC Master Race if you just don't have the time for it. Also, it's really hard to get a graphics card right now. I mean, it's really hard to get a console, but... It's not that hard to get a Series X or a Series S. I see Series S in Walmart locally, actually. Damn it, we got to work in Joe, but this guy is almost combat rating 700. He's probably pissed to be <laughs> grouped up with me. My 80s kung fu grip G.I. Joe looking guy. He's an unfortunate team partner for this. Uh, <laughs> he looks like he's a Gears of War reject. Hey, you got a PlayStation 5. Congratulations. It, you won a small lottery, man. They're really hard to come by. Um, Sony said that by now, like last year, they said by now that the situation for PS5 should have been better, but it's not really. All right, I got a badass flamethrower. <laughs> I got missiles. Let's hope it's enough. We also got that working Joe. He's a synth. He's basically... Sorry, the volume was off. I turned it back on. He's a bot, but he's pretty good. So, at least him being a synth, you know, if he does any stupid bot stuff, we can just chalk it up to him being a working Joe. You know, he's, he's not as... Um, He's not as advanced as David from Prometheus. Speaking of Prometheus... This place is gorgeous. Where are we supposed to go? Oh, my bad. 
Is it native 4K 120 or checkerboarded? So most people can't tell the difference between checkerboarded. Um, I'm pretty sure the 4K 120 is checkerboarded because 4K 120 is really tough. Nevertheless, at 120 hertz, it's with a fast-paced game like that, it's not it's not really that easy to tell if it's native or if it's checkerboarded. So I'm a pixel peeper. I don't care what anybody says, I can tell the difference between native and checkerboard. And I sure as hell can tell the difference between 4K native and 4K, I mean, 1440p. 1440p and 4K native, for me, it's night and day. I gotta really watch my team damage. This guy's rocking the smart gun, I'm rocking the flamethrower. The heavy guns are a lot of fun. Anyway, fuck. Um, 4K checkerboarding is so much better, in my opinion, than 1440p native on PC. Because on PC, you don't have checkerboarding. But you do have DLSS. And DLSS is fantastic until it's not. Red Dead Redemption 2? The checkerboarding on PlayStation 4 is much better than DLSS on my 2080 Ti. Sadly. They just added DLSS to, to Red Dead Redemption 2. That game is notoriously hard to run, so I was really excited about that, but sadly, <laughs> it's actually unplayable. It's, it's terrible, at least at 4K. Whenever you move, like, just like this, twitching back and forth, it's really easy to see it. If you've got a PC in Red Dead 2, try DLSS and try moving like this. Any movement with DLSS in Red Dead 2 has this really bad... Halo artifacting all over the screen, especially plants and foliage, it's, it's really bad. Think of it this way. It wouldn't be so bad if maybe it caused some visual artifacts with shadows every now and then, but for there to be, for the entire screen to be covered with artifacts whenever you move, and you're always moving, that's unacceptable. That's something that you don't really get all that often on consoles. You may not have the best graphics all the time, but it usually works really, really well. And it, you usually get better ports than PC gets. I think it would be cool to play as a working Joe, but kind of like a Robocop with built-in weapons. Yes! Yes! I would love a Robocop game! So picture this. All right, a game, uh, like an open world that's kind of like Cyberpunk. And you're playing as Robocop, and you actually get to augment your, your own body, you know? You've got, uh, you've got your gun stored inside of your legs and your arms. I guess it'd be kind of like, a uh, Rated M Metroid, in a way. Um, no it wouldn't. No it wouldn't. That's, uh, that's just a stupid comparison. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I've played Metroid before. Not much. I'm really excited about Metroid Dread. Anyway, um, it would kind of be a spit in the face to, uh, Paul Verhoeven, the director of RoboCop, because... I don't know if you guys ever saw RoboCop 3, but they turned it into action schlock. It's kind of like the Rambo movies. The first Rambo movie was supposed to be a statement on... PTSD in a way, and a man's dealing with it. And then by Rambo 2 and 3, he's killing like hundreds of dudes <laughs> with a fucking machine gun. <laughs> and in the first movie, it's quiet and somber and he's stealthy. And then it turns into, uh, well, shit, he's like Predator, except there's no aliens. It's, it's by far the b most bizarre sequel transition in history. Biggest shift in tone I can possibly think of. And now when people say Rambo, you think of a guy just going nuts with an, with an M60. When originally it was quite res reserved. Oh god. I like this room. It reminds me of the room in Prometheus with the giant map. And I won't get into spoilers, but... That was, a, that was a pretty cool scene with David. Chat room. 
What do you guys think about Prometheus? Most people don't like it. I understand criticisms with it, but, you know, if I just look at it... ...like I'm not expecting a Blade Runner 2049... ...it's a fun sci-fi movie. Yeah, they do really stupid stuff. The stupidest thing is in Alien Covenant when they... ...um... ...well, actually, they do the same thing in Alien Covenant that they did in Prometheus, which is... T <laughs> ...taking off your safe helmet... ...to breathe this alien atmosphere just because it has oxygen. Okay. You know, there's a lot of diseases that you can't see... ...and you can't really detect all that easily in the air. Airborne diseases. I don't know, you guys might have heard of that. <laughs> so... You ready, man? I'm ready when you are. Shit, I just wasted my missiles. Uh, I'm guessing he's ready. Accessing data. Casual -like. I'm guessing this is a bit of a taste of the horde mode. Kind of like Call of Duty World at War, there's a horde mode that you can unlock once you finish the game. And we got a bit of a tower defense thing going on. I planted a mine down there, which is already dead. I like to save the mines until the bigger xenomorphs come out. Usually the maggots come out first. These guys. But once the warriors start coming out of the woodwork, it gets hard fast. Something that's actually gonna need is that, uh, because this is basically it's basically a top down game that you play in third person, uh, with a little bit of tower defense thrown in. This is one of the two, I believe, classes where you can use the pulse rifle, but even though the pulse rifle's awesome, the flamethrower is awesome, the smart gun's awesome. I also really like playing as the technician, which I wasn't expecting. The technician is, uh, he's basically the engineer. You know, he's got turrets. He's got, uh, electrical traps that slow enemies. He's got other upgrades, but those are the ones you start with, and it's actually a lot of fun. A lot of people don't like playing as support. Almost everyone only wants to play as assault. In any game. Even MOBAs. At least when people first start out, they just want it. They don't want to play support or defender. But those roles are really fun in uh, Fireteam Elite. Fuck, oh, damn it. I mean, I do it all day long, but I hate it when my teammates walk right in front of my line of fire. Not that it can be helped. Nevertheless, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh god, not good. Oh, fuck. Shit, no! Fuck! I, that, there was something I could have done there, I don't know what. I guess I could have switched to my other gun. Damn it. They overwhelm you eventually, that's the difficulty. The real difficulty is dealing with the UI. There's no reach. I think the retry is... You know, I actually don't think you're supposed to retry it. I think you're supposed to go back to the base, which is weird. They got this timer up here. And I thought maybe when the timer expires, you... You know, that's how you roll back in. But I don't think that that is the case. It's this really annoying system of... 
I believe everyone needs to return to base or select return to base before you can exit that screen before the timer runs out. So there's a lot of decisions like that that are just kind of baffling. I think it's impossible to leave by yourself. We left with that guy. You always leave with the people that you just played with. I don't know why they do that instead of just allowing you to replay it instead of returning to base with your team. Really weird decision, but this game's kind of filled with them. Okay. Let's switch it up. We're going to play as the... Well... Yeah, we're going to play as the technician. Unfortunately, this is something that kind of just... is really unfortunate. You have this grind with every single class and it's just a way of padding the game's length so if you want to play on intense difficulty you have to grind whatever class you want to play on intense difficulty with and if that class is really different like gunner for example um at least you share, like, the pulse rifle with Demolisher, so that's something that's that's a common ground, but the technician, you know, he doesn't really have a lot of common ground. <laughs> okay, let's just hop back in. I just don't get why they don't have a retry button. It just doesn't make any sense. All right, I'll be right back. Two seconds. I'll be back before the match starts, hopefully. Oh, wait. Ah. They're safe in a company bunker. We are not abandoning them to the Xenos. Find a safe route through the caves so we can extract them. Did you group me up with bots? I'm assuming you grouped me up with bots. Yeah, it did. Damn. <laughs> this wasn't even on uh, a rare difficulty. This was on standard. This should be the most populated. When I streamed this the day before yesterday, uh, some of you guys were saying that I was being harsh on the game. And when I played it last night, I was thinking to myself, my first thoughts upon booting the game, because I hadn't played it off of my capture card preview window. Like, on my stream setup, it's just a very small, basic monitor. Uh, anyway, when I booted up last night on the TV, because the music's great, and visually the game looks pretty good, it's it doesn't have the fidelity that major games with big budgets have, but it's got great flamethrower effects. And I think the best thing it has going for it in the visuals department is the muzzle fire. Uh, the muzzle flashes whenever you fire the pulse rifle, which I don't have equipped, but it's fantastic. It's really rapid, so it's like an orange strobe light against your face and, and the environment. It looks, looks excellent. So it's got some personality, and the music's great, and last night I was thinking, you know what, maybe I was a little harsh on it, and then I played it, and I was like, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I wasn't too harsh on it, I, I wasn't meaning to be harsh, but um, I'm not playing and streaming it right now because it's really good necessarily, it's just because I was going to play it anyway and I want to hang out with you guys. 
And I like aliens. I like xenomorphs. But, you know, some of you guys were asking if you should, if you should check it out. Know what you're getting into. Know what you're going into. This game is getting some... Most of the reviews are pretty, you know, what you'd expect. Five, six out of ten. And then there's a couple of reviews that are glowing. And I just don't know where those came from. I read some of those and watched some of those reviews and... I don't know, it just, uh, it's like the negatives just don't really matter to them. And there are negatives. It's weird. I mean, look, it's aliens, it's xenomorphs. That's almost enough for me to not sell this and just keep it and see what the developers do with it with post-launch content. Because I do love aliens. At the same time, I don't think they're going to be changing the animations of the xenomorphs or improving the AI, those two things are very, very, very expensive. Animations are expensive as hell. So is AI, and it's really hard to do. Look at Cyberpunk 2077. This is made by a team of around, like, 11 people or something. That's what, that's what some of the reviews say, so... I mainly see new maps being added and new guns, which is fine, but... That's not what's going to really elevate the game. But it kind of reminds me of, there's a, there's a game on Game Pass, and it's, it's power washing. Like, you get to power wash buildings, and there's another game where you just mow lawns. This is that, but with xenomorphs. Which is totally fine. Just know that's, you know, that's kind of what that is. Ah, face hugger! Or chest burster. Emote. That's cool. That stuff's neat. Also, I really like the look of these missiles. Oh, fuck. I don't have the missiles. At least I can pick this thing up. I'm playing as the technician now. So I guess some, we're getting some different gameplay in. Also, what is with all the people AFK? For the most part, the community is great, and they weren't AFK for very long, which is good. But, man, I don't know. I've seen so many people AFK in this game and Pokemon Unite, and I'm just thinking to myself... Sorry, I just turned the volume back on. I'm thinking to myself, it doesn't take that long to get into a match. What are you doing? <laughs> Where are you going? I thought we, you were playing a game. Why did you why did you queue up if you're going to go make yourself a sandwich or something? Ah, oh, crap. I like to put these turrets where they're... Not in harm's way. That's what's fun about the, uh, about the technician is that you... There's not much that you can focus on in this game because there's not that much that calls for your attention. But, at least with your turret, you know, you gotta kinda try to keep them alive and that's fun. And then you got these little, uh, traps that you can set up that slow the xenomorphs down, which is also fun. And it's something to do. You gotta give yourself little jobs in this game. The shotgun's pretty satisfying. Hey, they got the flamethrower! I love that Keep thing. Moving. Yeah, uh, Ridley Scott... Wait, you didn't see what yet? Oh, no spoilers, please. No spoilers. I haven't seen... There's a movie that Ridley Scott's directing. It's got Adam Driver. It's got, uh... Um... Ben Affleck? It's got so many big actors. But also good actors. Ben Affleck's a good actor. Um, Adam Driver's a really good actor. Marriage Story, fantastic movie. Anyway, he's directing a movie. I think it's called The Duel. And it looks really good. I'm really excited about it. He's also directing a movie called Gucci. It's about the fashion designer. Crazy shit. It sounds like a really fun cocaine romp through the 80s. 
Uh, I believe that also... No, that doesn't have Adam Driver. I don't know who that has. But Ridley Scott's making some really interesting movies right now, and he's also producing an Alien series that's currently currently in pre-production. Speaking of series, they're making a Halo TV series for Showtime. And <laughs> the Showtime executives, uh, they said... And remember, the executives for Showtime, you know, they call a lot of shots. A lot of things are run by them, so this might not bode well for the Halo show. But the Showtime execs said uh, that they didn't really understand what they were doing with a first-person shooter video game next to all of their dramas. So it sounds like they don't really take it seriously, and they think it's kind of a silly, stupid thing because it's from a video game. And the creators or the showrunners for the Halo show have said that they're looking to do something really new for Halo. I don't know. Who the hell keeps asking for new things with these video game adaptations, you know? Like, uh, if we finally got a Mass Effect adaptation and for some reason they wanted to set it in 2022. And, and not as a prequel, but Commander Shepard lives in 2022, and maybe he's like a time traveler, and he, like it, maybe a jet engine explodes, and it sends him forward in time or something. <laughs> Some stupid Hollywood bullshit. They just can't help themselves. They got to do something different, something new. I think people, what people really want to see is one of the Halo stories done, you know, with a big budget and really well executed. And that's, you know, it sounds simple, but sometimes that's all you need. I'm trying to think of a video game movie that worked. Uh, Detective Pikachu was okay. I thought Sonic was aggressively mediocre. But, it wasn't bad. You can see the difference in the difficulty. We were playing on intense. Oh god, we were playing on intense earlier, and uh, we're playing on standard right now. This is easy, easy. Although uh, it actually gets, I don't know about this level. I haven't played this level yet, but on standard difficulty, uh, it can get surprisingly difficult if your team members aren't coordinating well. I had this one team member, he had a little bit of health gone, and he was already carrying a med pack. So he was almost full health. And I had no med packs, and I had maybe 10% of my health. This, this motherfucker, he uses his med pack and heals maybe 5% of his health that was gone. And then he picks up the other med pack. So he used a med pack, which can fully heal you, for 5% health. Meanwhile, I have no med pack, and I'm at, like, 5% health. At the end of the match, I had, uh... I was the highest damage dealer, highest assist, highest damage taken. I was number one at everything except for team fire. Uh... So, I don't know what he was thinking there. I mean, I'm... An alien, uh, fire team elite. I'm not always at the top. But I was at the top of that match. So maybe that explains why he decided to heal himself 5% worth. You know, there's not many superhero games. So, I don't know, Anthony. I don't... I like Spider-Man a lot. I thought that was a really good game. Spider-Man PS4. Miles Morales is also a good superhero game, but... The Deadpool game was all right. What else do we have? Superman 64. Obama, yo mama, you're right. I did need to heal. I have this really uh, tenuous strategy of, so the health packs heal you fully, right? So I try to wait to the last second to heal, which kicks me in the ass sometimes. But. 
It also means that, uh, you know, I just get a little bit more health out of it. Like, just in case I make some stupid mistake and I take a good chunk more damage, uh, but I don't die, then, you know, at least I saved that damage, or I staved off that damage. Come on! All-time favorite game that I've played? That's tough. Maybe Tetris. Maybe Red Dead Redemption 2. Objectively the best game I've ever played. If it's not something like Tetris, then uh, I would have to say it's Red Dead Redemption 2. And it should be. It's one of the most expensive games ever made. It's... It's really, uh... It's impressive. It's a tour de force. And with the budget of Cyberpunk 2077, I was really hoping that... Ah, oh, shit, I forgot what class I am. With the, bu oh, with the budget of Cyberpunk, I was really hoping that it was gonna give me a similar wow factor in terms of mechanics, scope, and execution. But not even close. Cyberpunk 2077 was about as open as uh, Wolfenstein. Or Bioshock. It was like Bioshock or Wolfenstein with an open world map. Is this game worth it to buy? I can't say that dirt bike. I, I can't answer that question. It's really simple. Really, really simple. Let's get some. Um, if you don't mind repetition, and if you're a really big fan of aliens, then I would say it might be worth it and I would consider it. If you can, if, if one of you guys is gonna buy this game no matter what, you got your heart set on it. Uh, see if you can buy it. Is that an enemy? Yeah, okay. I was just making sure. He had... My crosshairs were red, but... I don't know. It looks like he was attacking everyone. I guess he's just haywire. But that's the first time I've encountered a working Joe. Apparently there's space huggers as well. There's an alien queen final boss near the end. But there's not a whole lot of variety for the enemies, so as long as you're okay with mindlessly killing Xenomorph after Xenomorph, you'll be good. But if you can, if you got a console, buy it physically. So if you don't like it, you can sell it. You can't swap shoulders when you're behind cover, which is kind of unfortunate, because you can swap shoulders when you're, uh, just standing. Division 2's gameplay would be so tight with a game like this. It's too bad that Ubisoft is making... what's it called? Uh... I don't remember. It's a, it's a really... Like, uh... Gen Z-ish, or it's trying to be. It's a little fellow kidsy. It might be a good game, I haven't played it. But the trailer didn't inspire a lot of confidence. X-Riders? X-Defense? X-Dominant? 
X Defiant. Tom Clancy's X Defiant. That's right. I remember there's an XD in the name, and it kind of looks like the XD emoji. Uh, sorry, emoticon. But instead of that, how about they take... Because that's first person. How about they take the Division 2's gameplay and apply it to, I don't know, like an actual Terminator game or an actual Aliens game? Or, and this is my personal hope, give us a Jurassic World game where it's kind of a little bit like Turok, but it's third person with a Division 2's gameplay and a focus on tactical rifles, tactical equipment, net guns, track guns. Bear with me on this. Good vehicle handling, you know, it's a large open world map like Arma, Arma 2's map, or Arma 3's map, something like that, and it's like a pseudo MMO in a way. Anyway, you can uh, take these jeeps around, you got different vehicles, helicopters as well, and your goal is to neutralize certain dinosaurs and capture others. And you can be working for InGen, or you can be working for whatever, Dinosaur Saviors Incorporated. You know, you can choose who you want to... <laughs> who you want to side with. And... You got different, like, areas on the dinosaur you can target. Like, if you're using a trank gun, you want to go for the neck, let's say. Uh... Maybe you want to shoot them in the nose because they can kind of smell you. Can, they can pick up your scent, so you've got stealth mechanics. Damn it! And it's kind of like Red Dead stealth mechanics. Where you gotta watch wind, and you gotta look out for footprints. But with the Division 2's really tight third-person gameplay, I think that'd be great. But without the grind of Ark Survival Evolved, without that, no base building, uh, no early access style gameplay, Oh shit, they got turrets. Well, time to finally use my med kit. I don't think a lot of people buying this game are wanting to, uh, you know, turn into a cover shooter with synths cover shooting. I'm guessing this is only on a couple of maps. That kind of looks like the synth, which I'm guessing is intentional because of Prometheus. But those of you that don't like Prometheus will be happy to know that the uh, inspiration that this game takes from Prometheus is just in the art design. And maybe a little bit of the lore, a little bit. Maybe. But it's mainly the art. And everybody likes Prometheus' art. That's something that we can all agree on. I need some ammo, bad. Alright, close quarters combat it is. Shit. for this one. <laughs> you know what? It just clicked. The gunplay, the cover system, it reminds me of Mass Effect 1 on the 360. Like the first iteration of Mass Effect. Which isn't bad because that was an expensive game when it, when it was first, you know, when it first released. It was a triple A game and this is definitely double A. So, you know, double A games, it can, uh, it can reach 2007 AAA status. 2010. When was Mass Effect 1? I don't remember. Oh, hell yeah.
Nice. See, the thing is, the reason why we don't get a lot of games that are innovative and different is because it's expensive and it's a risk. But the open world Jurassic World game that I just described, uh, I don't think that is a risk. I think that would sell like hotcakes. Why are they making that Avatar game, which I'm excited for, but I think that's more of a risk than a game where you are PvEing with a little bit of PvPing, uh, with a bunch of butt. Imagine, imagine you and three buddies in a Jurassic Park Jeep, you know, driving through a huge field, and you got a guy on the back, like your friend on the back. He's got a trank snipe, and he's he's taking down these uh, uh, this this stampede of dinosaurs, and he's trying to trank as many as he can, and then you got a neck gun. You know, you're taking care of some of the other ones. And meanwhile, you got another friend up top in a helicopter uh, picking off uh, raptors or whatever's trying to get at the herd that you're trying to save. And then maybe there's the possibility that you got uh, some human players that chose to work for InGen. They chose that uh, faction. And they can come in there and, you know, try to kill you and steal your dinosaurs. <laughs> I don't know, that sounds like a good time. That sounds really, really expensive, but also, like, everybody would buy it, so it would make its money back. Oh, yeah, the Jurassic Park game that I'm describing, it would have to be rated R. You gotta have blood and gore. Like, imagine, you got a brontosaurus, and you're, uh, you know, you tranked it. Your, your friend is in a helicopter, and he's trying to line up on top of him, you know, so he gets the harness right. And then you got this in-gen asshole that only needs, I don't know, a blood sample, and he just gores this brontosaurus <laughs> with a grenade launcher. <laughs> oh god. And the guts go everywhere, you know, the rib, the rib cage splits open. Do they have shield enemies? Jesus, who wanted that? I hate shield enemies. I thought I was safe from shield enemies in, in my Aliens game. This is kind of weird. You got these synth enemies and you got xenomorphs. And they're fighting each other while they're both fighting you. Uh, I don't know if that's working. Look at that. That's so weird. Like, does that... It doesn't really add to the difficulty. What's that there for? With Xenomorphs, I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen Aliens. Uh... Do Xenomorphs care about synths? Because they're not alive. I guess that depends. Like, these are working Joes. David might be a little different. And... Uh, the intelligent aliens, I don't remember what they're called, the creators or something, they didn't seem to care about David until David, uh, made a nuisance of himself, so to speak. <laughs> so I'm picturing that the Division 2, the Division 2's gameplay, animation, and graphics would work and fit perfectly with, uh, the Jurassic Park game that I'm thinking of. Because the Division 2, the city, it already kind of looks like a world overrun by dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. And the third person gameplay is really tight. It's also kind of tactical, and I'm picturing the Jurassic World game being very tactical. You know, you having a lot of tools at your disposal to capture these things. Or to fight these things. You remember that uh, rifle? It's a real world rifle that Owen Grady uses in Jurassic World. That rifle is so fucking cool. It's, an, it's like an elephant gun. And I'm just thinking how satisfying that thing would be to use against, like, a raptor. And you'd have a little bit of Horizon Zero Dawn flavoring in there, just more grounded, you know? Where you've got trip wires. Taking out a T-Rex would have to be a team effort. You got really thick hide. You can't just do it with your pea shooter. Gotta have some strategy involved. Yes! The lever-action gun. Exactly. 
60s. Yeah, the soundtrack of this game is great. Like the ones on the Katanga working Joes when we pulled Hanukkah out. One must admire Wayland Yotan. Gotta start being careful. Oh, that's it. We completed it. Fantastic. Good stuff. Well, we're almost to a new area. Hey, we got a lot out of that. Nice. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we got a hell of a lot out of that. We now have enough money for a new gun. Question is, what gun do we get? We got rocket launchers and grenade launchers. I'm playing as the technician right now, so I'm really underleveled, unfortunately. They're playing as the fun class, the uh, demolisher. That's who I put the most time into. Technician's cool too in its own way. That's true. <laughs> that is a good chess pun. There's so much, so many possibilities for a Jurassic World game outside of Tessa making says my parks. My stock is unhealthy. Too much salt, fat, and sugar. Anything not on the racks, I can pull out of cargo form. So why can't I buy these? Oh, 4,800. Damn. Not there yet. Okay, let's roll back in. We're gonna go with Demolisher. I'm going to... I'm gonna stick with the Flamethrower, because it's really cool. And we're gonna stick with the Pulse Rifle. And we're gonna keep what we've been using. Oh, we got a new gun. What's this? Auto rifle. So it's similar to the pulse rifle, fundamentally. And it has a much higher fire rate. Worse everything else. But that's because we don't have anything equipped. Okay, now let's compare the two. So it's basically better than the Pulse Rifle in almost every way. Except the Pulse Rifle has a higher combat rating for some reason. I don't understand why. Alright, we'll just use the new gun even though it's not as cool as a Pulse Rifle. You know, with that green skin on this gun, it kind of looks like a... A Gundam gun. Not a gun for a Gundam, but a gun in the Gundam universe that the humans would use, the foot soldiers. Okay, see if we got anything else important. So, whatever you may think of The Division 2, I mean, the gameplay is... It's great third-person gameplay. Ubisoft seems to be using Rainbow Six Siege... ...as, like, a template to make other games. And it would be nice if they could do that with... It'd be nice if they could do that with the Division 2. Use the Division 2 as a template. Give us some good licensed games, you know? Closing in on our biggest group. They're at the bottom of an ancient ruin she won't talk about. It's a trade secret. There's Haywire Wayland Yutani security since ahead. Cut through them, link up with Rodriguez, and get her people home safe. I've always liked the the uh, hip harness for the for the heavy guns. It, it makes them make sense because these guys are you know they're they're buff, but they're not like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Looks a little. I, I, it, it would look a little unrealistic, 
with them holding a huge smart gun or flamethrower without one of those hip harness things. Plus, I think it helps with storage, offhand storage. Marines, you've sealed yourself in a dangerous location. The Xenos behind us weren't exactly safe. What's down here with us is worse. Some of these sound effects are great. And you know what? Some of these levels are really fun. Like, look at this. It's not full Geiger. Oh my god. <laughs> Show me what you got. It's not full Geiger, but Norway it's fun. I guess what I'm saying is my overall takeaway from this game is I would be happy to pay $20 more if this was a full AAA experience with all that entails. My question is, how did these xenomorphs mimic dogs running? Are they gonna do the worm? How are they gonna run? I've thought about that though, like, alien life. Did you see that gun flip it and twist it? Love that. Alien life, what would, what would it look like? I'm assuming it's... I mean, scientists, there's different arguments. You know, uh... Are we bipedal human beings or quadrupedal? Is that a word? Is that just pretty natural? A lot of scientists seem to think so. Like, if there is life, there's a decent chance it might look kind of like us. Because it just makes sense to nature. But are there things that would be beyond our comprehension? You know, like, uh, I don't know, an intelligent gas cloud. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of respect for scientists speculating on alien life, but damn, it's fun for uh, average Joes like us to speculate on. I love that stuff. Nothing is... Nothing's more frustrating than the, the thought of, where does the universe end? Is it an Ouroboros? You know, is it, is it just a circle? Probably. I don't... Probably. What the fuck am I talking about? It's probably something that we just cannot even comprehend or quantify. Did you see that guy? Area secure. Keep moving. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the way they react when they get hit is really cool. Sometimes it feels like they're not reacting at all when you're hitting them. What are these guys? Is there an ammo box I missed or something? I can't believe people that think that there's no alien life out there. Really? Also, is the universe infinite? Is it is it finite? I guess that's the same question that I asked before, but... There's no answer. Isn't that kind of nice? There's nothing left to discover on this planet in terms of lands, you know? We're, we're not going to discover new lands. There's really nothing new to discover. It's crazy to me that... Uh, you know, the hell's that? early 1700s, 1600s, there were things to discover in America for Europeans, at least, but that's a, that's a, it's <laughs> a dark discussion, but nobody knows anything really about the scale of the universe. The game would be better if it had, uh, you die, join the enemy team mechanic, get killed, get face hugged. If there was a mechanic where you could get face-hugged and turn- That would be kind of interesting. That'd be- that should at least be a game mode. I would love it if they could add- I mean, that's not gonna happen because... That would greatly increase the budget for the games as a service. 
budget that they have in place. You can't play as a Xenomorph, so they would have to create an animation set for that. It would be ridiculous. Cautious advance. But I really hunger ahead. for an AVP game, so... Give it to me. fight here so I'm just gonna hold off on healing I mean we're doing fine why not hold off I'll use my health kit at the end before I move out if these guys don't pick it up first there's one left I'm hoping it's gonna be mine chat room. When I glanced back down, I thought he was a sim. We can use that to overload the door console. Get the synth power cell. You'll need it to it's crazy to me control. that uh, I, I can see where obviously aliens landing on Earth. That's a crackpot conspiracy theory. I guess anything is possible, but you know we don't have proof of that. But <clears throat> for some reason, alien the existence of aliens is kind of like a it's kind of considered a crackpot thing. Why? I don't know. It makes perfect sense to me that somewhere out there there is life. The most depressing, scary thought I can think of is us being the only life in the universe. The whole universe is just dead. What the fuck? That's that's horrible. It's awful. I don't want that. Watch it. One's got heavy weapons. Where the hell are the enemies? See, the thing is... <laughs> That's kind of funny. If they could add crossplay or an option to expand your... What the fuck? Hold on. Maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me, but I thought I saw a giant. I'm pretty sure I saw... There's a big son of a bitch over there. Damn it, his body disappeared. Swear to God, they're making giant working Joes. He was like Spartan sized. I was thinking, oh my, my god, I haven't used my flamethrower since I've upgraded it. Anybody up for an alien barbecue? Clear. I've had enough of these robot pendejos. Um, anyway, uh, last night when I was playing the game, uh, I realized I would have loved this when I was a kid. If I look at this, through the lens of gaming experiences 20 years ago, it's a delight. And I don't mean that, it sounds like I'm negging it, I'm not negging it. Uh, the original Xbox, PlayStation 2, there were so many games that were kind of simple, but I just, fuck, I loved them. Like Omega Boost. Any of you guys know about Omega Boost? Probably not. It's kind of niche. 
but you know, it's it a pretty simple game. Nowadays, that game would not go for full price. It just doesn't have the content. And you can pair Omega Boost to, I don't know, Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid, that has the content of full price even today. Not the fidelity, but, you know, it's just a different... The games were different. They were, they were simpler. And this being simple, I mean, depending who you are, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This flamethrower is useless against these guys. But, yeah, I was just having a lot of fun, kind of pretending that I was playing, uh, I don't know, uh, the modern uh, incarnation of those old-school uh, Xbox original games. Just, it's basic. It's just about shooting xenomorphs. That's all, that's all there is. Oh, you couldn't save Omega Boost? I forgot about that. So, oddly enough, eventually I was able to find a copy of GameStop, but I played Omega Boost a lot on a PlayStation 1 demo disc, and that's where most of my memories are in terms of my Omega Boost memory bank. It's almost all the demo disc for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I guess I just assumed that it was my memory card in hindsight. Not back then. Back then, I, I'm sure I knew what was going on, but... It's just weird that my mind completely erased that fact. It was like Star Fox 64 in that way. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's... I guess nowadays, that would be called a roguelite. Back then, they didn't even have a term for it. It was just... what the game did. Did they have a term back in, like, the... 90s? For roguelike? I don't think so. There were gaming magazines back then, so maybe. Looks like Zenos. Kind of fun watching these guys crawl uh, across the walls. There just really isn't a lot to this game. Like, uh, there's kind of less than Predator Hunting Grounds, because Predator Hunting Grounds, you're playing against people. There's all kinds of strategies that you can learn. Things that you can practice as the- oh, fuck. Things you can practice as the Predator, or things you can practice as Arnold Schwarzenegger. The last. Get to Rodriguez before more show. But there's no, there's nothing really to do here aside from just mindlessly kill these guys. You got this fun little damage meter that's in the center of the screen. Well, below center. It looks like signal bars. Uh, you got stats. That's pretty much it. The AI is not Herrera, close to being smart enough to necessitate to strategy. The only survivors of Paula Station are synthetics. Yes. We're not gonna leave you in their hands. Oh shit! Yes. And another we're thing, these bastards. Depending on the map, uh like the ship maps, it's so close quarters that you can't it doesn't matter if you see them first. You can't avoid them jumping on you because uh you can't kill them in time unless you have I don't know, a rocket launcher to spare. So, it's not quite like Left 4 Dead where you have these different archetypes. No, it's really just shoot it until it dies. Head on. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Muzzle flash in most games is just a JPEG. But I gotta say, it's... Oh shit, what the fuck? I didn't even see that mine. Check this out. Tell me this muzzle flash. Like the lighting against your character. Tell me that's not satisfying. 
it's more satisfying with a pulse rifle because it's an orange muzzle flash. So the lighting casting from the muzzle flash onto your character is nice. Really nice. Good black levels, too. That's a lot of working Joes. That's creepy. I dig it. Look at that. That's so fucking cool. I don't know if this is supposed to be hard or if this is just supposed to be fun. I think this is supposed to be fun. These guys pose no threat. We're just cleaning house. These poor bastards are just sleeping. You know, that actually reminds me, Alex, Mr. Alex Tyler, you jogged my memory. Uh, some Call of Duty games, the gun is, uh, like the gun, the firing, the, you know, bobbing, the whole thing. It's not a model, it's an image. It's a, it's a uh, series of images. Maybe it's technically a movie, but I think it's actually played as a series of images. Instead of a three-dimensional model. I don't think that's the case anymore, but it was for a while. Hey, check this. Uh, what we're on this? standard difficulty. Oh, fuck. We're on standard difficulty. Right now, on PlayStation, it's really hard to find matches for Vegas. higher difficulties. I told you. So I kind of gave up. S-N-T-H-Y-A. Wayland yutani Model 9500. I was, I am, the central computer of Paula Station. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I will say, because the difficulty of this game comes from how many enemies are attacking you instead of their strategies and their AI, uh, standard can actually get pretty tough if your teammates don't know what they're doing. Because when you've got an enormous horde of bullet sponges coming after you, it can get overwhelming on any difficulty. But I do recommend playing this game on intense or higher, especially if you're playing with friends. It is a lot more fun that way. Oh my god! <laughs> Excuse me. Cisco! Um, what if... Oh, maybe that's what Star Wars Gallery is. But, you know how they've got the Marvel What If series? Imagine if we had a Star Wars What If series. I can't think of a better franchise for that because people are always asking, Dude! What if Luke Skywalker turned to the dark side? And they're obviously never gonna do that in a movie. But, uh, a What If series would be perfect. They do have a Star Wars anime coming where it's, it's like, uh, very samurai-esque. That looks kinda cool. I think that's sort of like a What If sort of a direction. But, a straight-up anthology What If Star Wars series. That would be so much fun. Jesus Christ, it won't let me- there we go. It won't let me get the cover. Star Wars Visions. So that's already that's already a thing. <laughs> I didn't know that.
by the way. Uh, we're playing on the PlayStation 5. I'm sure you guys already know that. Uh, streaming at 1440p. Highly recommend watching this in 1440 if you can. I'm actually surprised at how good the game looks considering it's a double A game. But this is just getting me so hungry for an actual triple A campaign for aliens. Aliens is the art style. There's nothing like it. I honestly think that we could get, I mean, I would love an Alien Isolation 2, but Alien Isolation was pretty goddamn great. And I don't know what else they can do exactly with that premise or that stealthy premise, but if we could get maybe a multiplayer Alien Isolation, that might be kind of fun. If we could get a full-on AAA story-driven Aliens game in the Aliens universe with exploration, Mass Effect style, sort of. Not the same gameplay loop as Mass Effect, but, uh, you know, with the purpose of going to new planets and exploring, seeing what you find, what kind of crazy alien hijinks you can get into, I think that'd be great. Those look like bees. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know if there's any youngins watching. So don't make me say it. It looks <laughs> their internal organs are just a bunch of sex toys. The auxiliary is now handling 76% of Cynthia's internal power. Did you see that? The ragdolls, awesome. Have we seen much gameplay from the new Avatar game? I thought we just had the trailer. Power core on the deck. I think Alien Isolation didn't sell that well, unfortunately, so I'm pretty sure that's why we're not... The Terminator game we got, the Predator game we got, the Alien game we got... This Alien game, I mean... Oh, shit. They're all pretty low budget because they don't have faith in the franchises to move a lot of units. And I think it might be because of Alien Isolation. I think that was a fair budget game and it just didn't do very well. And then, Aliens Colonial Marines, Gearbox, Randy Pitchford, you son of a bitch. Uh, Gearbox mismanaged funds that were supplied from 20th Century Fox to make Aliens Colonial Marines and they funneled some of that into Borderlands, Borderlands 2. And that was a disaster. I think that's another reason why some of these 80s properties were just not getting big budget games anymore because of Randy Pitchford and because isolation. Damn shame. God damn, I love that fire effect.
70 bucks for the deluxe edition of this game? What's in the deluxe edition? Because they said uh, all gameplay content, I thought, was supposed to be free. I thought the season pass was supposed to be free. So what are you getting for $70? A digital soundtrack? Okay, I'm out of health. I should probably hang back. Yeah, they do look like Cobra Commander helmets. That's what I was trying to think of. That's a sound glitch, by the way. There we go. I can't do anything to fix it. It has to... The game has to fix it. over right we didn't expect to find a rogue botnet but you handled it nice job fire team it'd be nice if there were cutscenes every once in a while like a dropship coming in something It's all right. Uh, I don't know why it just won't let me return to base without waiting for those dudes. Really, some really weird decisions here. The season pass is for paid cosmetic content. Okay, deluxe includes the pass as well as uh, oh, some cosmetic stuff. Okay, well that's all fair. I don't think it's worth the price, but that's all fair. That's the thing. Everyone says that, not everyone, but so many people say that they hate paid cosmetics. And I'm over here like, I can't believe uh, we're getting maps for free and guns for free and gameplay stuff for free and map packs are dying and I don't have to pay $15 for a new Call of Duty map. And all it cost was a couple of ugly skins I don't know who's buying them, but I feel like I'm, I'm making out like a bandit because I'm not buying any of these ugly skins in Call of Duty. I don't think I've spent a cent on Call of Duty microtransactions. I, I don't think I've bought a battle pass or anything. It's great. I buy the game and that's it. I don't have to buy map packs anymore. Yeah, it'd be nice if all of it was free, but I mean, come on. Uh, I don't think we're... Maps, you know, we, we've, uh... We're not really losing anything. We're gaining things. Yeah, games used to have all the cosmetics unlockable in the game, and you didn't have to pay for anything, but... They also had expansion packs. And, uh... Man. Fuck expansion packs. Unless it's for single-player content, but for multiplayer maps... I'd rather have the player base not be separated. That's a cool looking gun. It's kind of weird looking. Looks like a gun from Star Citizen. Let's see how much money we've got. Heard the new track by Left Up Well? Love that band. I read you. Let me check what I've got. Will I be playing the... Battlefront 2040? I, I mean, 2042. To yes. FDL, you know where we be? Uh, hmm? I signed Spending up for the alpha, and I was. 291 billion clicks an hour. That's where. Is it legal? I mean, if it's illegal, I can get no problem. But if it's legal, I'll need you to file requisition form 1348 or 1348 Mike. You can grab those off ship net. That's. What he just said is way too long. He... I have to talk to this guy to get to this menu. I've heard that a couple times now. It's getting pretty annoying. Anyway, uh, I signed up for the alpha, and I was accepted to the alpha, but 
then it was canceled for PlayStation 5, so I never got to play Battlefield 2042 on PlayStation 5. Or, I never got to play the Alpha period. Apparently, Call of Duty Vanguard's beta is tomorrow, so I'll be streaming that, but... The... There's a campaign video for it, and... Man, it just looked like it was from 2010. Hmm. Games are starting to look pretty good, but I'm ready for games to start doing different things. I'm gonna go for the rocket launcher, that sounds like fun. Sniper rifle's probably the smart money. I wish I could try these. Less damage than the flamethrower. I don't know uh, how long you have to hold the flamethrower to get 1200 damage, but higher weak point damage. I don't know. Doesn't seem that good. Shit, this kind of seems better. Hmm. I'm gonna stream Phasmophobia soon. I saw that they released an update today. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Regardless, I'm starving. I'm gonna get some food, but I will most likely be streaming tomorrow, Call of Duty Vanguard. Uh, hope to see you guys for that, but thank you for joining me through this alien hangout. It's a game. <laughs> it's, uh, it is what it is. And what it is is killing xenomorphs, and damn, I do love xenomorphs. It's kind of carried, but would this be as fun if it was just a bunch of generic aliens and uh, generic tech and none of it looked like aliens? No. No, it wouldn't be. It's not a bad game. It's not. It's just, you know, you've only got so much time and 40 bucks is 40 bucks. So it's not for everybody. That's all I'm saying. I don't think there's a whole lot here that's going to hold many people's attention for a too long. Regardless, if you guys enjoyed yourselves, leave a like. I hope to see you again tomorrow. And again, thank you for hanging out with me today. But until tomorrow, game massively and stay frosty out there. See you guys soon. Take care.